2.1. Consider the function f of x equals x minus x squared and the point p on the graph of f where p is at 1.5 comma neg negative 0.75. So that's indicated on the graph here. Part a, graph the secant lines passing through p and q where q is x f of x for x equals 1 and 1.25. So you have some similar notation like this in your homework and all you're doing is plugging in the x that's given, the first one is 1, and then you can find f of 1 to figure out what that point is q. And what this is saying is we're always using the point p, but q is going to change depending on the values that we choose close to the x coordinate of um, 1.5, which is where p is. All right, so let's look at that and then we'll look at the other parts. So I actually cheated and worked on this ahead of time a little bit to make sure I could draw some good lines that you could see what's going on. So the point p is included and x equals 1 for q1 is in blue, it's a blue point, and the secant line is just connecting the point Q1 and P. So that's shown in blue. The other X that was given was 1.25. So that's 1.25 on the X axis, bring that down to the graph, and that point is indicated in green and labeled Q2. Using the point P that's in black, just connect those, and that's a secant line between Q2 and P. So, I think we're done with part A. Now part B says find the slope of each secant line. And so what I say here is we're going to use a demo I'm going to show you in a little bit to get more points. But we're just going to do these two for now. So the slope of the secant line is just finding the slope of the line. And I'll color code this, so we'll do line A first, the one that's in blue using Q1. So a reminder that the slope equation is often written m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the points we had here is P which has an x-coordinate of 1.5 and a y-coordinate of negative 0.75 and q1 which is 1 comma and then we could use the graph but let's do this exactly because we know the equation of the line is y is equal to x minus x squared so yeah we could find it on the approximately on here, it looks like the y-coordinate is zero. Let's just double check here because this is a graph I drew especially. You know, maybe it's not quite perfect or maybe it's not quite zero. So the way we can confirm that is plugging into the equation that was given. Now if the equation is not given, then estimating from the graph is the best you can do. All right, so plug in, we have one minus one squared, which, oh yeah, that is zero. So now we have Q1 is 1 comma 0. So the slope of line A is going to be taking the y coordinates and subtracting them. So I'll do this in the order of Q1 minus P of 0 minus negative 0.75. Now you have to keep the order the same because I use 0 and use Q1 first, I have to also use it first for the x coordinates in the denominator. So 1 minus 1 1.5 and I get 0.75 over negative 0.5 which results in a slope of negative 1.5. So let's see if that makes sense. It's a negative slope which makes sense from the graph and yeah it seems like it's about maybe negative 1.5, you kind of got to look at the scale here. Not exactly 1 to 1 on the x and the y axis, but you know, kind of looks reasonable. Well, let's do the next one. Line B. We have the same P, but our Q changed. 
or Q2 has an x-coordinate of 1.25. So this point is getting a little bit closer to the point P. And then we need to figure out what the y-coordinate is. And since we can do so exactly, we should. So let's plug it into the equation again. And so we have 1.25 minus 1.25 squared. which is, just put some of the details in here, we get negative 0.3125. So for our slope, we're going to do a similar type of thing. I'm going to take the y coordinate of Q2, negative 0.3125, minus the y-coordinate of the p, which is negative 0.75. Maintain the order, i got to use q2 first, 1.25 for the x, and the x from p is 1.5. Alright, so we work that out. We get negative 0.4375 on top. 0.25 in the bottom. Final answer, negative 1.75. So now relative to line A, we have a slope that its magnitude is getting bigger, which makes sense. So, you know, without the sign, in other words, the green line's a bit steeper than the blue line. So the fact that we're getting a little bit number, larger number part is consistent with what we see on the graph. Alright, so we're going to look at a demo in a bit here um, to fill in some other slopes of points that we don't have on here. So we will go to that now. Um, by the way, well I should mention, maybe here before we go to that, that the line of B is getting closer to what the slope of the tangent, or getting close to what the tangent line would be, and its slope is getting closer to what the slope of the tangent line should be. But we got to look at a couple different secant lines approaching. Technically, from both sides is how we should do this to estimate the slope of the tangent line at P. That's kind of what we're moving towards. Going back up to part C, it says use the slopes of the secant lines to approximate the slope of the tangent line to P. So that, yes, this is what we're moving towards. And it seems like, why don't we just do it the way that I did the first example, but this is getting at something we're going to do in 2.7 and 2.8 that we have to look at from this perspective. So we're just trying to do this now with some numbers and actual graph here um, to get a handle on that. So now let's go to the demo, and what I have shown here is the first line, line A, that we did. The tangent line is appearing now in blue, so it says the answer here. We're supposed to get negative 2 for the slope of the tangent line, but what I want to show you is that as we pick points closer and closer, notice that the slope of that red line or those secant lines approaching the tangent line from the left are getting closer and closer to that slope of negative 2. So what I want to do in this demo is cheat a bit instead of hand calculating points from the right, let's use this demo. So notice that if we pick points on the right or Q's and we pick them closer and closer from the right hand side and then we can look at it from that perspective. This lingo I'm using is probably pretty similar to something you've heard because we are talking about taking a two-sided limit here of the slope of a line. And it turns out that's what a derivative is. So we'll get there and define it later, but it is something that um, does involve a limit. So specifically, let's look at uh, Q or a point 
at x equals 2. So I'll just put that in exactly, and it says the secant slope is negative 2.5. So I'm going to go back to my notes here and write some of this stuff down. So we have um, slope of p and q3, which we'll define as having x coordinate 2, plug in an f of 2, indicate this is from the demo, um, equals negative 2.5. Okay, then also from demo, the next one we want to find is the slope of the secant line between P and Q4, which has an X coordinate of 1.75. So let's take a look at that. We'll enter 1.75. And it's getting its point is getting closer to x equals 1.5 where p is, and we have a secant slope of negative 2.25. So one more time back to the demo. What we're going to do now with the table form is we're going to take a limit of the slope as the points that include point P and values approaching, or I should say points approaching P from both sides, you know, what do we get for that slope? So look at the values at the bottom. It says tangent slope is negative 2, secant slope is negative 2.43. Notice that if I keep doing this, I'm getting values that are getting closer and closer to negative 2. So we're getting really close from the right. And then you might not know how far to go down. Do you go to, down to negative 2? The values are going down um, magnitude-wise to 2. But, you know, maybe it's 1.9 for magnitude. How can you tell? That's why you have to look at both sides. So from the other side, notice we have values that are in magnitude going up from 1.89, 1.905, and they're getting closer and closer to 2 so that we can squeeze that in and, and figure out that, yeah, it looks like the tangent slope. So this blue line here has a slope of negative 2. All right, so... Um, summarizing this information for part C, we had an x for a q of 1, 1.25, and then at 1.5, this is where our p is, and the tangent line is here, and 1.75 was another x we used for the q and 2. So what we found for the slope with P, which was 1.5 comma negative 0.75, those values we got were negative 1.5, negative 1.75, negative 2.25, and negative 2.5. So we look at the pattern here. What are these values coming in? This is a two-sided limit, and it looks like it's going in to negative 2. So that's the answer.